Today on Outside the Box Reviews, it's a bug hunt. And it's also Figure Wars. Today we are looking at the McFarlane Movie Maniacs Series 7. Colonial Marine Corporal Hicks here on the left and on the right we have the NECA Alien Series 1 Corporal Dwayne Hicks and I'm gonna be up front right here right now the McFarlane Hicks is the first older action figure I've ever picked up just so I could do a figure war on him. I picked him up about the time of Comic-Con last year, right when NECA unveiled their marine line. And my local comic book shop had him swinging from the pegs. I was like, you know what? He's 13 bucks. Why not just go grab him and have him for that future review? So, yeah, thanks to me being obsessive, I guess, I can do this review now. Most of the time when I do these figure wars, a lot of times it's been between Mezco and NECA, and there probably hasn't been as much of a time gap here. With these figures, we were looking at a nine year difference. The Movie Maniac Series 7 came out in 2004, and of course, the new NECA Alien series, this is 2013 that they're coming out in. So nearly a 10 year difference, nearly a decade of innovation in the marketplace in between these two figures. So we'll have to keep that in mind as we get into these characters. As usual here with Figure Wars, we're going to start off with the older figure and look at his accessories. Hicks comes with a display base of the colony floor with alien goo all running through it. Two big pegs on there. Not a bad display base at all. Works very well for him. He doesn't exactly need it to stand up, but it helps a lot. I want to introduce you to a personal friend of mine. This is an M41A pulse rifle. 10 millimeter with an over under 30 millimeter pump action grenade launcher. And here we go, this is McFarlane's version of the Pulse Rifle, and it's pretty cool looking. It's a little on the large side, very blocky looking, but it has some great detail in there. A lot of kind of scraped up metal look, I love the look of the handle on here. Triggers are well shaped, it actually does have metal rings hooking it to the back and front here. The strap is a little overly thick and very rigid, it kind of keeps its shape no matter what you do with it. But the sculpting detail on here is pretty impressive. It looks good for what it is. Here on Hick's armor, we actually have a knife that's removable from its sheath. Now, mine is super, super warped. And I don't really see a way around that. It just kind of happens with this way this figure is constructed. There's no way to get it in there and then to have the handle come out straight because of the welder down here on his belt. It just knocks it aside, so no matter what I do, this has been a very warped piece. But it's really cool that it's removable. He cannot hold it, however. His hands only really hold that pulse rifle, which kind of sucks. And then Hicks has the accessory that is the bane of my existence. And you can see I haven't even taken this out of the package. This is the motion tracker, the thing that... He gives Ripley the bracelet and he can track her movement and then Ripley gives the bracelet to Newt. This teeny tiny little thing, as I mentioned before, there's no way he can hold this. It's just way too small, his hand is not made for it in the least. So I really don't understand why this was given to us, but I will forever leave this in its little plastic pouch because what the heck else am I gonna do with it? It's just too small. I don't even think the NECA version could hold this. Maybe if one day there's some magic that happens and we get a Ripley figure and she has the ability to hold this, I might take it out of the package and give it to her. But this is just too small. This is ridiculous. Now, that's everything my version of Hicks came with. But there is, floating out there, a McFarlane Club exclusive version of this guy that comes with a shotgun instead of the pulse rifle. And on his base, he has an open alien egg with a face hugger that can come out of it. So that's kind of cool. Definitely an interesting variant to get on this guy, but not something I was ever really tempted to track down. 
Moving on to the NECA Hicks. Just like his McFarlane counterpart, he comes with a pulse rifle. And once again, this one is really well detailed. Very cool looking. It still has kind of scuffed metal look. The handle on the gun itself looks like it has more wear than the McFarlane one. The McFarlane one kind of has like a wood finish on it. This one's just flat black. But the black still has some scuffs in it. They kind of use this sparkly, like, metallic embedded paint or plastic for the gun that kind of gives it a cool metal look. I really do like this. Once again, I feel like NECA's gotten the criticism that I've been putting out there from other people as well that their black plastic guns just look too plastic and flat and it seems like they're trying to do something about it. The green on here is nice as well. Barrels are well sculpted. Strap on here, mine is brand new, but it is a little more flexible than McFarland's. Maybe over time it'll loosen up even more. It does have the plastic straps connecting it to the gun, which are always a little worrisome. I'm also afraid these are going to break and snap. They all seem to be weak points. And here for comparison, you got the two together. You could definitely see a big size difference. The other thing NECA has over McFarland is this little tiny box right here. To me, is very important. That's your shot counter. That's how many bullets you got left in the gun. And I was very happy to see Hicks came with that on his. Now, of course, there's no actual readout in that box, which I'm kind of glad because it would have been kind of annoying if there was a number in there. And you also have to pretend he perpetually had the same number of bullets. But I could almost imagine somebody doing a custom and putting a little number in that box if they have a very steady hand. Hicks also comes with this pouch you can put over his shoulder. There's a flexible band. Once again, this is very stiff on mine, but it has some good detail on the buckles and the straps. You can even see the holes in there that it would buckle into, which is really nice. Cool looking leather pouch back here. And then we could flip up the lid, which has a big beefy peg in it, which is a little hard to get in and out. We could pull out the shotgun. I like to keep this handy for close encounters. Very cool looking. Once again, this really showcases that metallic sparkly plastic. Has a decent looking wood grain on the that part. I don't know. I don't know gun mechanisms. I'm so bad with this. But that looks okay. It doesn't look great. It doesn't have quite as much detail as I would love to have on it, but it is well done. It looks pretty good. And as far as I could tell, it's not a reuse of anything from Ash or a Terminator or something, which is bonus. I did just notice on mine, I do have some sloppy paint up here on the top of the gun, which is a little annoying. But it's cool to have this. McFarlane made you buy a whole separate version of the character that was an exclusive to get it, so pretty cool that we have this as an option. And then on Hicks himself, this one doesn't have a removable knife, it's firmly sculpted in there, but the little welder is detachable. So we get the cool little welding device that he uses to seal the door. I guess it's not just a welder, it's also a cutter because he uses it to try to get Newt out from underneath the floor grates. But it's pretty well detailed for the size, it has a little screen that will block out the light and little nice grip for his hand. Not a bad accessory either. I did not expect this to come off. I probably wouldn't have tested it unless I'd seen NECA post on Twitter about how it was removable. Back to McFarlane looking at sculpt and paint. Now sculpt on McFarlane ranges a little bit because there are three different versions of this figure. I already discussed the one, the club exclusive, but also just in normal shipping, there was a variant to the version I have here that had his helmet on. So obviously I don't have the helmet, I can't really review that, but I have this version. And I gotta say, this doesn't really look anything like Michael Bean. McFarlane was pretty good at doing some monster sculpts and things like that. They're really good with detail on hardware and military devices. I actually wouldn't be surprised if this was just a McFarlane military generic head sculpt and they stuck it on this figure. It doesn't look at all like Michael Bean, but it has a little headset coming down here, which is kind of cool. You can see it's strapped across the top of his head, really messing up his hair. The armor is well detailed, very well painted. Pretty much all this is fairly hard sculpted. There's a little bit of soft rubber up at the shoulders. But he has his undershirt with the camo, then his jacket, he has the heart with the lock on it. He has the little clip on his vest, some extra shells. He's got what I believe is a grenade over here. He has his version of the welder that isn't detachable. Obviously the knife I mentioned already. He has the bullet hole and born again written on his armor. 
The back here we have his little box with the light going over his shoulder. This is not articulated, but it is softer rubber, so it is pliable. You're not gonna rip it off the figure by moving it around. The lower part of this armor is also a little flexible, but not by a lot. Is his crotch armor there, which is totally inflexible. His arms, he's got pretty big beefy arms. He has the wrap around his wrist here. He has his watch on this arm, along with his USCM tattoo up on his arm here. Legs are well detailed. He has his lower leg armor, and then of course his boots, which Looking at these now, these look a lot like the Dutch boots we got on the new NECA Dutch figures, which is kind of funny. Overall, outside of the head sculpt, everything on here is pretty solid. It's decent looking, if nothing else. For a figure that's nine years old at this point, this is about what I expect from McFarlane. This is pretty top notch for what they did. Going back over to NECA, I gotta say this doesn't really look like Michael Bean for me either. I'm a little disappointed. First off, mine's a little cross-eyed, which sucks. He's missing a little paint on the tip of his nose. The facial expression just isn't great. It kind of makes him look sad and mopey in some poses. And that's a little bit of a downer. But it looks enough like Hicks to not be like, who the heck is that? The hair still isn't right. His hair is really wispy in the movie, kind of very spiked and gelled and very 80s. And it's just hard to get right in plastic, I guess. But after having the Terminator Kyle Reese figure that I didn't feel really looked like Hicks, it's a bit of a disappointment to see they haven't really gotten much better at sculpting Michael Bean. And this figure uses paint. It doesn't use any of the cool translucent plastics we've gotten lately, which is also a total bummer for me. We have his armor, and we get pretty much the same things we had on the McFarlane one, except this is all a soft rubber piece. Actually, almost two. This belt is soft rubber separate from the armor, which is soft rubber, which is separate from the undershirt. Just kind of neat, very almost inception layers of stuff on Hicks. We have his name written on there. We have the heart with the lock, much smaller on here. All the different clips, the shells in there, the little do that's on the belt. Of course, the welder we spoke of. We have the straps here underneath his arm. Lifer here on the back and the little kanji symbol. Now you can see here there's some little plugs in the back. This is because I think a future version of this character and the Hudson Marine comes with a backpack, the light backpack that we see on the McFarlane version. And that will plug in here so you can still swap and move things around. When you have the shotgun on him, he kind of covers this up. You don't even really see it but it's there just so if you want it you could use it and plus i'm sure NECA just molded one version of this and used it repeatedly we also have the bullet hole in his shoulder born again is much harder to read on this version the NECA version it's very muddled born's a little easier again is very hard to see and the bullet hole is a little more distressed the arms on here are well done his bandage on his arm looks a little more dirty than the mcfarlane version we still have the watch. We actually have sculpted in arm hairs on here, which is kind of crazy. And also, once again, the USCM tattoo on his arm. It's funny, because I'd mentioned that NECA's Dutch seemed a little less beefy than he should have been, but looking at these scrawny little arms on Hicks, and Hicks was pretty big in the movie, I th at least I felt he was. Maybe the Arnold arms aren't quite as small as I thought they really were. Maybe it's just a proportion thing. Of course has his lower armor here. This is a soft rubber material. This lower part is kept separate from the upper part for articulation, but we'll get into that later. Camo pants look really good. A lot better than McFarlane's. We have the knee pads on there. These are separate pieces to go with articulation. Lower shin armor. Great buckle detail. And some cool boots. These ones are brown instead of the green on the McFarlane. Articulation, and this is where McFarlane fails hard. This is why I never really liked McFarlane. The head, I think, is on a ball joint. It can kind of go side to side, and it can rotate. It's a very awkward head motion you can get out of them. You can do the uh, Night at the Roxbury with them or something. The arms feel very fragile. There's a pin socket joint up there at the shoulder, but you can really only turn it and move it in and out a little bit. The upper sleeves are softer, so you can get some motion out of it. You could also rotate pretty easily, but it feels like it's going to break every time I move it. Wrist is a cut joint on here. You can swivel at the waist, and then nothing else. 
The downside to all of this is that it's very hard to get him in a convincing gun holding pose. He always kind of holds his gun at a weird angle. Even the official photos from McFarland show him doing this. So they couldn't even get him in a better pose. I normally just have him with the pulse rifle in one hand pointed up and the other hand down because that's really the most convincing pose he can achieve. It's a little disappointing when it comes to this figure in that respect. I understand McFarlane didn't have the best articulation. I knew that getting into this figure, but being able to hold the gun in a convincing way, that's pretty important. NECA's Hicks, however, is chock full of articulation. He has a ball jointed head, which I saw some complaints online. I kind of understand the feeling that they say it's a little weird the way it's sculpted. You can see this little lip up here and when he turns it, it almost looks like he has like a roll of fat or something at the base of his head. It's a little off-putting looking, kind of makes some of the poses look a little strange. I wish they would have done maybe the Terminator style thing where the neck and the head were all together. Pin socket shoulders, they feel a little fragile. Actually, these whole arms feel a little fragile to me. But you get a good range of motion out of that. You can swivel at the upper arm, which is really cool. You can bend at the elbow, the joint that has me the most worried because it just feels really stiff and very delicate as well. You also rotate at the arm, but I feel like it's not supposed to. It's just the way the joint is. So I'm not going to mess with that too much. The wrist, you can rotate, and it actually has a hinge joint at the wrist, which is kind of cool. Very Marvel Legends-esque. You have a ball-jointed mid-torso. You can see the armor is split to allow him to get a good range of motion out of that. Pin socket legs, forward, back, out to the side. Rotate the upper leg. Double jointed at the knee, ball jointed at the foot. These are a little bit of a letdown. The Dutch figure had such great foot articulation, the way it was mid jointed through the actual boot. I wish they would have done that here. This doesn't give me the range of motion I really wanted. Plus the fact that we don't have like a calf swivel or something makes him a little hard to position sometimes. But in another Marvel Legends-esque thing, we actually have an articulated toe. How's that? That's pretty cool. Of course, we do have peg holes at the bottom of this figure as well. So you probably could put them on the McFarlane base. Overall, both of these figures are decent. There's nothing really too bad with either one. I think I would definitely go on the side of the NECA one just because we have nine years worth of action figure innovation. He's much more highly articulated. He comes with a lot more. The head sculpt is better, even though it's not on point. Just overall, he is the better of the two, but the McFarlane one's not that bad. The downside with Figure Wars is because I am directly comparing two of the same character in figure form, recommending a figure feels a little pointless when I'd be like, oh, well, yeah, I recommend the McFarlane. If I reviewed him separately, he would be recommendable. He's not a bad figure, but with this new NECA one, He's kind of a moot point. He kind of doesn't need to be purchased, doesn't need to be part of your collection. You could just go with the NECA version and probably be just as happy. The paint and sculpt on most of the McFarlane one are really nice. It's really well accomplished. I think they did a really good job on it. The articulation stinks and the head sculpt doesn't look anything like Hicks. Those are two big downsides to it. NECA's... Like I said, I'm afraid the articulation may be a little weak and the head sculpt isn't perfect, but they still captured a lot of detail on that vest. There's still a lot of things going for them. And just like McFarlane released a lot of versions of theirs, NECA isn't done either. By the end of the summer, we're supposed to get two packs of the Marines featuring the Marine, an alien, and maybe an alien egg or something. I don't remember how much they were actually promising us on that set, but I believe that will also be a version of Hicks with a helmet, probably with the light pack instead of the shotgun. So there definitely is opportunity to pick up a lot of variants of Hicks. I'm sure they're probably not even done after that. They do like to re-release popular characters quite a bit. McFarlane, as I said, there's the three different versions you could hunt down. Honestly, if you're going to go the route and actually get the club exclusive version, you probably just need the club exclusive and the one I have with the radio and no helmet. The middle piece, the helmeted regular release, I would assume is only something you really need if you're a carded variant collector. 
Yeah, recommend on both these figures. I think the NECA one wins out here in the figure war itself. But both worthwhile action figures. Let me know in the comments down below who you think wins this war. Do you have a soft spot for the McFarlane? Is he just old and outdated? I'm curious to see what you guys think. Make sure you check out Outside the Box Reviews on Facebook. As always, there's a link below. This has been another Outside the Box Review. Stay tuned for more to come. Figure Wars! And look at his accessories. I'm so unprepared for this this damn thing. <laughs>